Introducing the all new Corolla. That's why an intervention. And we're going to keep in mind that those kids. Wahan Academy Charter School uh, administrators invited lawmakers, the media, and members of the Consul and Charter Schools to their campus today to hear about day to day operations at the school. Senator Aileen Yamashita, along with representatives from the Legislative Committee on Education, came for several reasons including the need to restore the relationship with the school following a tense oversight hearing last week. One was to ensure that we started healing the relationship. Uh, two, to get an overview of the student demographics and a sense of the programming uh, efforts uh, that are in place. And I believe we, uh, we even got more than we wanted in the second part. And then third uh, was to get the assurance that, uh, as we know, documents are coming in. Yamashita, who is the vice chair of the Legislative Oversight Committee, says much of the dialogue that happened today could have taken place during last week's oversight hearing, which was dismissed after GACS leaders refused to talk, except through their attorney. Attorney Daniel Summerflex cited the lack of oversight authority of the legislature over the school as a reason for not speaking. But Charter Council member Jamie Mason today said the council does expect charter schools to be transparent to the public. I believe that they have done the best that they possibly can to try to get information to us and the council. Uh, it's been a long haul uh, to, you know, road to hope. But, um, you know, any time you implement something as massive as this, you know, you're creating another school. There's bound to be some kinds of problems and misunderstandings. During today's meeting, GACS staff presented the lawmakers and policymakers with information on staffing, student demographics, and discipline policies. But they also discussed some of the challenges of being the island's first charter school. For example, school counselor Lindsay Roussan says there needs to be a clear policy on how charter schools should handle truancy cases. Basically, we have made some inquir inquiries to the court and have not gotten a response um, in, as to how we would handle this since the, the superintendent is the one that um, by law adjudicates the students. And then uncertainty in procedures after the student has reached truancy, so that's basically um, our concern. One of the school's goals has always been to expand their programs by a grade level each year. The current facility on the Cortec grounds in Tietzen, however, is not big enough to accommodate that growth, but CEO and Principal Donna Dwiggins says the school is pursuing additional facilities and funding to make an expansion possible. We have no definite plans. Uh, we're, we're looking at facility issues we're also pursuing grants. Unfortunately, a lot of the big um, pots of money out there, like Walton Foundation and Bill Gates and that stuff, you got to be in operation for uh, have a three to five year track record. You know, we're also looking at what other federal grants might be out there to help with that, and as well as local benefactors that might be. Um, encourage. Another oversight hearing is also being scheduled for sometime in January. Betsy Brown, PNC News.